What's up, y'all? Welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I'm your host, as always, Jack Vita, alongside Miranda Rose Harrison. Hello, how are you? I'm great. It's great to have you back here, Miranda. We're going to call Hello. this Deal or No Deal Island Insiders, a new special edition yes, as we take like a close look into the seventh episode of Deal or No Deal Island. I like that. It's a good idea. <laughs> okay, so we're going to dig in. Uh, we got special guests joining us in a second. But first, if you guys like Deal or No Deal Island, you want more coverage of the show, you like this podcast, hit subscribe here on YouTube, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our exit interviews, our recaps with Brooke Strzok, and then some of this additional insider stuff that we'll be putting out hopefully throughout for, for the rest of the season. Um, today... We're going to speak with the star of the latest episode. You know how, Miranda, you know how they do in hockey, like the three stars of the game? I love hockey. <laughs> you know, my favorite part about hockey is that the, the, the refs allow them to fight uh, up until they touch the ice. So the most chaotic part of hockey is my favorite. And I think they should allow it on reality TV. You know what? If you sign a contract that that says, you know, if you get into an altercation, there will be no charges, then they should allow it, right? Fist fight, drop the gloves. Once they, like, go to the ground, you've right. got, like, bodyguards come in, separate them, put them in the penalty box for 15 minutes, and let's just keep the show going. Yeah, a little time out. Never hurt nobody. Hey, I want to ask you a question before we bring in the guest. About you're an ex You're an exterminator. You're in pest control. Yes. So when you were a little girl, when you watched a bug's life, were you just like, I just want to kill all of these. I want to take all these bugs out. It was so, I loved that movie. And I was just like <laughs> in all of it. And like, it, it kind of is how they work in reality, like in real life. And we tend to like forget about that little like life down there. And it's so extraordinary. So I'm just like fascinated. And yeah, like if they're bad for you, I'm definitely going to exterminate them. <laughs> okay. And on that note, so here's what we're doing today. We're talking about the star with the star of the episode. Like we said in hockey, you got the three stars of the game. This is the star of the week seven episode. Um, we did talk with the last person eliminated. I did an exit interview with her. So if you guys want to go back and check that out, it was only 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, only got to ask a few questions there. So um, today we're going to kind of get the other side of the story from someone who will get a full hour. And I must say, again, if this, uh, if Alyssa wants to get a full hour and would like to talk about this in greater detail, she's always welcome to do that. Um, today, though, we have an awesome special guest joining us miranda why don't you give a nice little warm introduction for our guest today all right she is the queen of the hour a night owl all right also known as a barn owl we got stephanie the midwife let's bring her in come on now <laughs> Yay! Yay! They, woo, well, woo. thank you for the warm introduction hey jack that was really nice the stars stop playing i don't know <laughs> Welcome to the show, Stephanie. You know you were the star. This was the Stephanie episode. What? Let's just like, by kicking this thing off, let me ask you this. What'd you think of the episode? As a viewer, uh, as a person who was there, what'd you think? Thank you so much for asking that. Because as you know, I'm watching this in two realities. I'm watching as a viewer. And as a viewer, I was, I was so surprised and so shocked at a couple of things. Number one, there was probably a little foreshadowing about the fireworks that the banker uh, gave us, a little fireworks show. And there at the end seemed like another show of fireworks. And as a viewer, I'm like, what happened? What led up to this? Like we got some ideas during the episode. Um, namely, I think it opened right up and you know, clearly Alyssa had something on her mind. She wanted to get me out. So there's this story brewing and, you know, you see little bits and uh, flickers of it in different ways, such as like, um, you know, I wish I had, I wish I was a witch and had a voodoo doll and I would stab her. And Rob's like, what? And Alyssa's like, I'm serious. That was wild to me as a viewer. I didn't, I didn't know that it was to that level. So um, I was really excited for the episode. It was a great game. It was 
That was the first time we saw the penny case in action. I mean, it was wonderful. Mm. Yes. <laughs> that was insane, the penny case. Like, as soon as you picked that number two, you had already won the game. Isn't that, isn't that wild? Like, it's a game of chance and luck. And that really exemplified it. And I would re be remiss not to talk about um, the excursion, the paddleboard excursion, because as a viewer, I was laughing my behind off at, <laughs> <laughs> at like Rob and Nick trying to like get on that paddleboard. And you see Amy and I um, just dying, laughing, sipping our iced tea, having a good old time. And I will say that that was just as funny in real life as we saw and witnessed on the screen. Now, do you think that that was one of the easiest challenges coming from right out of putting your hands in full of snakes? What would you say <laughs> so far is the easiest challenge toward for you? Where you're well, like, oh, I feel like all of their excursions definitely hold some level of challenge. And so physically, from a like purely physicality standpoint, it was probably a little bit easier. Um, I don't have a huge fear of water as I do for like, so I didn't have to overcome that. Um, and it seemed like I'm familiar. I've been on paddle boards. I, ha I ended up with a great partner. Um, I, I understood what the excursion was. Um, so it was like, I wouldn't say easy. It just challenged us in different ways. And I believe this episode was about decisiveness, correct? Yes. Yes. So I certainly saw echoes of that as well, because Amy and I had to make a choice, as did everyone else there. So being decisive and putting your eye on the trunk that you wanted, going for it, and just you know being clear with what you were going to do with that, with that key, which ended up being super helpful for Amy and I. But um, I think Amy and I both went into this with a very decisive, clear plan of what needed to be done. And I think also this episode was really the first time where I was fully open to the idea of like, hey, you know what? The banker starts off as like a really scary thing. Like, I don't wanna go to the banker. I don't wanna go to the banker. Okay. But when the stakes become so high and you realize with going to the banker holds some sort of power, it's not scary anymore. And it's easy to make a decisive decision as y'all saw. And, and well, you mentioned the excursion you i'm really curious to know stephanie sorry to cut you off miranda um but i, I would love to know about the uh your decision to go for the five million dollar case and then because we got bits and pieces of it where you guys said in the confessionals i want to face the banker i want to be in the bottom two so was that the goal of like if we get this case we're going to be in the bottom two that's what you guys were hoping would happen or was there any kind of hope of, well, you know what, we could, maybe we could win the immunity and then we could still put ourselves in to face the banker? There, it was um, a couple of things, but one for sure, we knew that there was going to be some sort of like bonus element that could potentially help our game. And we needed that at that juncture. I needed it probably more than anyone else. Um, and so uh, I wouldn't be lying if I said, I hope part of that decision um, was driven by the fact that I was hoping that there was some sort of personal offer attached to this <laughs> because the banker has been quite, you know, friendly with the <laughs> generous, yes, very, very nice with the money. So like low key, I was kind of hoping for that. Cause in this game, you have to make decisions like, you know, um, what's the most important, do you go for the money? But that could, decrease decrease your your um chances of moving ahead so there was it was multiple things but ultimately amy and i knew that we wanted either one of us wanted to face the banker for sure and and it's all about being decisive too and i think you and amy were the only ones that stuck to the first cases that you guys got and everybody else switched which meant they were undecisive right totally totally yeah. And I, and I give Amy the credit for that. Amy is super intuitive and they don't get to show a lot of it because of the edits, but like during the deal or no deal game, there were multiple, multiple occasions in which Amy was like, yep, 
stick with it go higher go you know take the deal like she'll just she'll be like she'll throw out a case number you know and so when we got on the paddle board she was like number two let's go i was like okay like yeah dude it's a game of chance it's just as good as any i'm happy to go along with a decision if i feel like it's a it's a potentially good decision and we went with it amy snagged that case we came back and we were sipping our tea enjoying the show watching everybody sweat and worry and you know fall off it was really great amy's a great partner to have because i had her as a partner and i got all 10 arrows but she only needed like three girl yes i was like (laughs) Okay, I turned around to get some tea and come back and cheer her on, and she's already like gotten the case. So I was Done. Like, hey. Yes, yes, it was. It's amazing. She's a good partner. I had Nick as a partner before. Like I've had um, Boston Rob as a partner before. Like dominated together. I'll say that you and yeah. Boston Rob. My goodness, you guys. Were- that was all my partner. For me, I was like, this is the one I lose. This is the one I lose. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. You guys are great. Yeah, he did awesome and um, with getting the um, you know, getting the extenders and putting them together. In fact, he was the one that was like, I was like, should we go? We have two. We're tall. Should we go? He was like, no, we're going for the third. And was very clear. And I was like, go ahead, because you're the one putting your hand in that box, sir. So I'm with whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. So you guys end up, you know, finishing in the bottom two. And then Nick and Rob get to choose yep. which one. Why did they pick you instead of Amy? Well, first, I believe it's because Amy had played already um, and just the week before. And I also pled my case, as is happens when we come back from these excursions. Increasingly so. People want to have some semblance of control of that particular game of deal or no deal against the banker. They want to decide for themselves in their own game. Um, I'm, you know, I would like to play. And so I did that. I approached Nick and, and Rob and I said, put me in. And it's a treat to go up against the banker too. I mean, there's people are going that are going to go home, not being able to have their moment which is the original deal of no deal, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a treat to go up there, you know? After a while, you shouldn't be afraid. It was a treat for you, Miranda. It was a treat. (laughs) Hey, hey, I I know you had a good time up there though. Let's say that. Oh, I don't know about that one, but okay. (laughs) Victory. Yeah. You moved on and you're still in the game and you're kicking ass. You're kicking ass. You're kicking butt. (laughs) Stephanie, you had a clear plan throughout the episode. It was always going to be Alyssa. But if Rob had been up and you could have gotten Rob out, what's the move? I had thought about that. Now, Rob was safe, as you guys know or may not know. Well, now you do know as as viewers, Rob has targeted me and has said my name and have tried to create situations um, to make me a target. And I think that stems all the way back from the very first episode. But um, so I know that he is, I'm getting the idea that he's coming for me. I'm starting to feel uneasy with him, Um, particularly after that, uh, you know, Keech uh, episode where it was kind of set up um, from what Aaron told me, a plan by him and Alyssa, Rob and Alyssa to, you know, put me in a position so that I can have my game ended. And so Rob doesn't know I know this. I've kept that conversation between Aaron and I to myself. So as far as he knows, I'm just ignorant and unaware of what is happening. And I would rather a very quiet sort of dispute with someone, meaning he knows where I stand. I know where he stands. We're not talking about it. We're not making all these big, wild situations. We're just, we're going to play our game. Whereas Alyssa, unfortunately, very vociferously and very uh, strategically uh, tried to have me eliminated. So I had no choice but to move on to the bigger threat. Now, you know, it's like there's chess moves that you could make if you're your enemy in the game. And I hate to use enemy. That's such a weird and strong word adversary thank you thanks jack because yeah your adversary in the game there's many more moves that you could make if they don't know 
mutually that you are each other's adversary. Just keep it on the low. Don't talk to nobody about it. Don't plan and strategize and scheme. Just have that mutual distrust. You, there's more things you can do. But when someone is directly attacking you and being very vociferous and vocal about these things, you have no choice but to avert your attention to bigger um, targets. Because Rob hasn't vocalized to anybody of the other castmates, from what I can hear, that he is targeting me. So we can keep that. Don't say nothing. Just keep that on the on the low, on the low. So I think, unfortunately, Alyssa put herself in a situation where her risk to me in this game began to supersede Rob. Does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, because everybody was, you know, out to get Rob and it was kind of like already on the hush hush. And then, you know, Alyssa just kind of came out of nowhere and then just kind of put herself on the radar. And and it does. Yeah, that makes sense. So. And from as far as we can see as viewers on the show, nobody has come and told Rob anything specifically about Stephanie's targeting you. We've heard that from other people, you know, but that no one, he's never been presented that information and we need to keep it like that. Yeah. The game of telephone in this game was, was harsh. Deadly. Yeah, it's totally deadly. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to address the elephant in the room. Obviously sure. <laughs> you and Alyssa had a, a confrontation mm -hmm. and we only saw some of it. I imagine, I, I imagine that there was a lot more yeah. that was said yeah. That how long did that thing go on for? Is there anything that you think you want to you want to kind of address that may not have gotten shown that you are able to speak about? Sure. I mean, and I'll speak on it because I did listen to your last episode and your last two. And it does seem like, well, where did that come from? And I think as viewers, you guys probably get glimpses of it. Um, as I said, referring back to the time where Alyssa, you know, felt as if she wanted to perpetuate some violence against me by way of a stabbing. <laughs> now, that may be a joke or whatever it is, but that just tells you the level of intensity of animosity. It never got that far for me at all. It's, a, you know, it's a game. I, I identify behaviors and I apply a, a name to that behavior. And as we can see, and you guys are seeing also, you know, there are other remarks that show the level of intense animosity against me, you know, the whole like eat makeup situation or whatever the case that could be that was on the internet. Um, so it's just like giving you guys a quick glimpse of what I had to kind of endure through the game in terms of like the levels of aggression and animosity. And I, and because Alyssa spoke about it, I will about a particular incident, and there were multiple in this game, including the excursion where you, Miranda, went up um, as hunters and gatherers and snagged, um, you know, the, okay? Snagged. Uh, yes, yeah, personal offer. And although- Miranda, you, you, want some, you want some additional money too? <laughs> yeah, other than the 40K. That's why I, like when I was up at Temple, I was like, 40K plus this? Okay. <laughs> Yes. But yeah, they didn't show it. They showed Alyssa. But what they didn't show also is that Alyssa did not um, cop to telling anyone she got the personal offer. She kept that to herself, which is fine. It's game move, whatever else. But the other thing is that people had an opportunity, should they have taken this personal offer, they had an opportunity to split it with their um, with their partner. She also took that opportunity not to split it with her partner, where everybody else uh, split that personal. Again, um, that's her prerogative, but it just was a mental note. I'm like, okay, here you are. I, I, that's fine. Um, you're entitled to, but I just put that in my back pocket. And when Kim exited the game, she was sure to tell me that she had a personal offer. And I was like, oh, that's news to me. All right. This gives me a little bit more of insight on the character. Um, and then there was another excursion in which, um, I chopped down a case from a tree. It hit the ground. The luggage tag uh, fell and broke off somehow. And this was the excursion where Aaron had to like give us the key, the bank, you know, he was locked up behind there. So I get to, um, I get to a place where I, um, we have to wait in order to go wait and go and see Aaron. At this time, I don't know Aaron is there, but Alyssa does. She's already done run through once already. Um, and I'm, I'm looking around and I realize my luggage tag tag is gone. 
when it hit the ground, it must have fallen. So I have my tag and I'm looking around and I'm like distraught um, or whatever. Meanwhile, Lissa is there. She had run up behind me and she's squatting down. She's not making eye contact. She's not talking. She's not anything. And as I'm going to look around her to see if my luggage tag had fallen in her vicinity, I see her taking this other luggage tag and hiding it behind hers. So I'm like, Alyssa, that's my tag. She's like, oh, oh, this is your tag. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize. Oh, you didn't realize you didn't see me walking around here looking for my tag that had broken off. She's like, oh, sorry. Um, and, and and the way that she puts it as if, as if it was a nonchalant accidental thing is completely false. I will not be gaslit on that one. Like she purposely, whether it was to try and find an edge or an advantage in the game or any of those things, I don't know the rationale, but I perceive that to be disingenuine and like snaky and kind of like sneaky and like unkind. But anyway, that wasn't even part of the game. Like, girl, you, you there's rules and regulations to this. You can't just go around hiding people's tags. So anyway, that was just another marker of a situation of just like her uncouth behavior. Um, and there's just like a multitude of things. When it, Miranda, when it was going to be you or Alyssa playing, I went to Alyssa and I said, Alyssa, can we speak? She was like, there's no reason to. I was like, oh, oh. got it. Okay, honey. And so and that's I, after when Sheer had already known, like, oh, we're going to go. They, they believed in me too much. Oh, my God. I, and thank you for that, Miranda, because I give my life to you in this game. <laughs> at this point, Because, you, you know, you didn't go with the flow, you know. You looked at the, what was what you were facing. And so, you know, when I ended up at the temple and said what I said, it was never anything um, personal other than behaviors that I would not be able to forge a uh, trusting relationship with uh, that person in this game. You know, before you start backstabbing the way that Alyssa was about to backstab Aaron, as we all witnessed on episode seven. Well, I was... Oh my gosh. Like before you start doing that, like get rid of the rest of your ops before you start backstabbing your, you know, your own people. But she didn't think that far enough in the game to think that these relationships are going to be important. She came out the gate scamming and scheming to get Kim out. Oh, we're going to do this plan. Then you do that. And and then, then, then we, we toss the game and, you know, I'm like, uh-huh. Because I'm standing here listening to your plan, doesn't mean I agree with your plan, doesn't mean I'm going to go with your plan, it doesn't mean I'm endorsing your plan, it means I'm listening to you in your plan. Um, and so I'm not doing that. And when we got to the pavilion right before we went out to the swingers club, Alyssa goes to me, oh, plan has changed. Um, Rob said we should throw this comp. And I'm like, so as I'm still trying to like, figure out where Alyssa is in the stream of things. I was like, so you don't see anything wrong with that? You don't you don't think that there's no no bells going off, that you have this elaborate plan, but Rob wants to have people throw the competition. You don't, that's not weird to you. Apparently it wasn't weird to her. So I said, okay, well, that's not weird to you. It's weird to me and I'm not doing it. <laughs> so maybe she looked up to Rob more than she looked up to Aaron. But it does kind of confuse me why she would want to get Aaron out before she gets her enemies out. Aaron trusted her so bad. 100%. That he even disclosed to Rob, who was supposed to be his number one, that given an opportunity, Alyssa would be safe before him. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how much Aaron put Alyssa. He put her <laughs> as his number one. And she had no intention of being able to fall make a real bond of trust with anybody in this game. She couldn't do it. It was impossible because she did, was unable to function, to play in that way. She had proven herself to be untrustworthy and deceitful and manipulative and, and also mean in, in, in many respects, you know, um, for things we saw on and off the camera, including those interviews. So, you know, it was a, it was a moment where I thought, um, yeah, I had to get some things off my chest because of the disrespectful way in which, look, I'm just trying to play my game. Win or lose, it is what it is. I'm trying to play my game. But to be so flippant and flamboyant, oh, I don't care, and I'm not even listening, might have been true. 
But up until that point, regardless of what we perceive the outcome of the game to be, we were respectful during people's games. Like I clapped for Claudia, knowing that if she was going to win, I was going home. Kim clapped for Rob or was respectfully quiet and not present. Um, even though Kim knew that should Rob win this game, she would be going home. And Alyssa was unable to hold that level of decorum. And frankly, it bothered me enough that I felt I was going to remind her of why she was going home. And so I did. And, um, you know, for many people, as I've seen the commentary on the interwebs, <laughs> they don't feel that that was very nice. And I must say to those who um, have never met me is that was just a sprinkling of a dusting of how I could have verbally assaulted that girl. That was about as kind as I could be. And my voice did not go up an octave. I simply described her behavior. And that's what I did. Like, so, yeah, that was just, a, that was barely a dusting. I kept saying, NBC is a family program. This is a family <laughs> program. Like, the levels of decorum that I showed that girl was astounding, even to me. No, I mean, it was good. You did it professionally, classy. You know, I mean, you being upset with, you know, you had your reasons. That, there are so many things that happened off camera that gave you a reason to become that, like, upset with her. You know, it's okay. it's just all in the edits. I mean, they showed that one. And I had no idea that she talked about having a voodoo doll and wanting to stab you. I had I, no I idea. I thought that was her personality. And so when I saw it on camera, I'm like, whoa, that was it. It, looked it reaffirmed to me what I had already been like experiencing, but knowing that this is what she, to this level is what she's saying behind the camera really reaffirmed to me, like Stephanie, you were dead on. You were absolutely right. Um, you call the spade a spade. Um, but in that moment at the temple, were there some other things that were said potentially that I, you know, just, um, it was honestly a blur for me. Miranda, did you, I don't, do you remember me telling you anything that, because I know you've heard it from multiple people. During my, my temple or your temple? During my temple. Like, it was such a blur. I know people have talked about it, but. In which part? Any of the explosive. The confrontation, I believe. <laughs> no, I, honestly, like I, like I said, I, when I watched it, it was just kind of like a, you know, because Amy was trying to get her out. I was trying to get her out. It was more of like a, yeah, like. You go, girl, like, because we all know what went on in camp. And we all know the levels of the things that happened. Like, uh, you look at Jordan, right? So Jordan doesn't have to do all those shady things in order to get to continue in the game. She's literally not hated by anyone. She doesn't have to, like, go to somebody or go to start rumors. She doesn't have to do any of that. And she's, you know, continuing and being strong in the game. So I, I just want to say that I feel like, you know, Alyssa just probably came into the game with the wrong gameplay. Um, you know, sometimes you can have a strategy and it's just a bad strategy. And she admits it. She admitted that it was bad. She didn't, she shouldn't have came in so strong. She should have never done the plan in the first place. Um, so, I mean, lessons learned here for real. But your your game, your temple, the way you picked your case, oh. it was just like any, you know, you had case number two. And for you to have a penny in the original deal or no deal game, that would have been absolutely horrible worst thing right <laughs> you had it in the best possible way um that case would have been yeah that case wins any any game so when you had that that was awesome it was. Uh, and you really got to you know do what you wanted to do and you're you're i don't know you're blowing up right now so <laughs> oh i don't know yeah it is uh, i guess we could call it a little bit <laughs> for real you guys are i cannot wait to the next episode same <laughs> Yeah, we talked about it on the recap and just, you know, I try to be as neutral as possible and try sure. to objectively look at this thing. And I was a little, I shouldn't say I was surprised. I know, obviously, there are a lot of opinions all over the internet on both sides of everything, just in general. And, but when I was seeing some of the comments about people saying, like, I cannot believe that Stephanie did what she did or whatever, I mean, what was the, like, Miranda, what was the worst thing that Stephanie said? She basically, she called her a snake. She said it was the Alyssa show. She was tired of that. No, she said And she basically was like, get out of here. It was pretty much, that's, if I summed it up, right, that's it. She did not cuss. 
she had very just like just straight on to a point like you were very devious um and then you know Alyssa was saying i think you're confused trying to gaslight her um and she just i don't know she held herself she it was very showmanish like it was, in sports it was like, when you like dunk on somebody and then you get a technical foul is what i would call it it was to me it was like a um an argument you would have back then with audrey hedburn if you guys were arguing <laughs> she was just like okay you know like just this classy like girl <laughs> stop being so devious like i can't wait to get you out like you were just i don't know that's how i saw it because i know who you are as a person and you're not this witch um <laughs> and you bring life into this world so like you love you know just being i don't know i just once you get to know somebody as a person um that all those comments that you see are just so you just want to laugh at them it's it was so weird couch yeah. warriors <laughs> Well, and so I don't, I don't even know Stephanie. Like I'm just meeting her right now. And I didn't think that she was throwing any low blows or anything like that. She was excited. And yeah, you could take exception to what she did and what, whatever. But for me as a reality TV fan, I like seeing the confrontation. I like it. And Stephanie, you're a fan of reality TV on a scale of like one to 10. This is like a four in terms oh, of heavy. like, yeah, oh, like heavy. Heavy. no. Much worse things have been done and said on reality TV. Girl, very like, I don't even think you bent over. Like you didn't even point. You were just so posh and you were just like, no. Yeah, right? no. You weren't like pointing fingers or anything. So. And did Joe need to ask me uh, who I would like to exit? <laughs> he did not. He did. No, he did. He did not. Um, did yeah. I just like, I, it's unfortunate that in that moment of, intensity that people have this snapshot and then so suddenly like assume a lot of things but like i don't really you know i don't i don't really take much like credence to these things because it's just like a moment in time you know i am a midwife i take great pride in my work i'm also a mother of four you know like i i order from starbucks without like you know <laughs> without cussing people out like oh see i can't always do that now but i'm also <laughs> like a highly faceted super complex individuals and i have moments of high intensity and i have moments of low intensity and that is just like you know sometimes you get what you get depending on the situation so i you mm -hmm. know yeah i just you know i, I mean, uh, have a chance to talk back she chose not to, which is sometimes that does protect the peace and stuff. But if you sure. really, you know, she did have a chance to be just as calm and, you know, out there and say what she wanted to, but she didn't. So I don't know if that was just to protect her peace or if it was just like, it you doesn't know, matter. that's how doesn't matter to me what the reason is or not reason. She had plenty of rebuttal. And I do want to touch on this, if that's OK, Jack, because I will say this is that when I made the comparative analysis between Alyssa and her snake-like behavior, and I just so happened to look and she had a forearm tattoo of a snake, I just thought, well, how serendipitous. You are a snake-like person and you have a snake on your forearm. It's the obvious like re visual representation and reminder of your behavior. And Alyssa said, uh, Alyssa said, you're, you're, making fun of my coming out story. I'm like, what are you like? What are you talking about? <laughs> apparently the snake, right? Apparently the snake was her coming out story because of the skin that it shed and became a, another snake. And I just was pointing out simply also that a snake can peel its skin off. It will, it will always be a snake. I just was simply saying that. That has nothing to do with her coming out story. I'm a huge ally. I've written a childbirth uh, education book for everyone, for all people. That's one of the tenets of the things that I believe in, um, you know, equality and these sorts of things. Like, so just hearing that she tried to also, again, manipulate that story and twist that story is super vile and super disgusting. And also, I think that speaks to her character. I do remember that. And I'm speaking on it because that's what I heard. And we will clear that up right well, away. 
I know you would never because <clears throat> Dawson, you know, he's gay and you guys are really close. So there's like, I, you don't, do, th th there were multiple occasions and I don't want to speak for other people that the gen look, this game is this game, but like there's genuine characteristic traits that you're going to possess in or out of the game. And mm -hmm. other people can speak to this because it's not my business necessarily, but there are things that have been done and said outside of the game that are deeply personal and could affect people in their personal lives. And so by Alyssa. So, I mean, like I said, it just speaks to the, the, the true character, which is why I was so unabashedly able to call out those characteristic traits that I saw. And I will continue to do so if I need to. Yeah. Do you think that part of the reason why this reaction has been, it's like, I mean, you and I, I know that you, as you mentioned earlier, you and I are like old school reality TV fans. Like yeah. we've been watching this genre for like 25 years. So maybe <laughs> <Don't remind us. laughs> for me, it's like 25 years. It might be even longer for you. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. You're right. <laughs> but like we see a confrontation and we're like, oh, you know, get let's get the popcorn. This is good. Yes. This is I love it. And do you think part of why people have taken like made such a big deal and a spectacle out of it is because of how Aaron responded to the situation? That that could be. Aaron got super emotional and had a reaction, which to to his own self proclamation was a panic attack. Um, you know, so that could be triggering, you know, the entire explosive thing may be one of his triggers. Um, that maybe I really begin to be aware of during different heightened um, emotional states times during that show. Like when Claudia started yelling at um, Kim, Aaron was really struggling. He was having a hard time. So it is no doubt that during our emotional contentious like issue, um, that he had that reaction and Aaron's taken a social media hiatus. He's just doing what's best for his personal health and his personal mental health. And, um, if it affected him in that way, I have no doubts that it does trigger other people and could trigger other people who only get to see me in this particular, um, moment. Um, and that's really tough. That's something that people have to to grapple with and mental health is super important. Um, I've been told I trigger people before and I, you know, <laughs> can you imagine? Um, but I, <laughs> I'm very I, triggered uh, right now, Stephanie. <laughs> Get off the podcast. There's a lot of things. You've been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happens. I get it. Like it's hard to be around different people sometimes. Um, so that could be energy. What's yeah. that? I said different energies. You know, you got the high level energies, you got the low level energies. Sometimes yeah. high energy, like me, ADHD, like I could trigger somebody if they're just like, yo, Miranda, stop it right now. You cannot trigger a kitten. <laughs> That's why she's so successful in her exterminator business. They never see her coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're no way. Um, mm. I'm it's a, a killer. Yes. And you look cute doing it. But also, you know, it's it's wild because um, you talked about like the things that trigger people. And for me personally, violence triggers me. And so I know you are a fan of like, <laughs> you know, like let them do. You guys are saying like, let them duke it out on reality shows. But that's <laughs> what freaks me out. Like, I don't I'm not I've never been in a fight. So I got jumped one time in high school. We can talk about that later. But like, I don't fight i don't fight i use my words and i speak but um threats of violence is my trigger um just like the way that i grew up and so that is something that i very much understand as like you know we all have our little target points but like here that's why perhaps hearing Alyssa speak so vehemently like violent in that way i was like oh my goodness does no one else have that same trigger maybe not you know, they seem more triggered by the words that I was saying as opposed to the actions and the words that she was saying. And like, it's valid. I'm triggered by violence. Other people are tr triggered by meanness. Um, and that's what some people felt I was portraying. So that's tough. But it's, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Miranda, you got a good you got a good question for Steph here. 
I have so many questions, but it depends on which episode because, you know, just flying by. Ooh. What do you want? What do you want to ask her? Um, I think I had one about the, the paddleboard. Um, oh, yeah. So you would say that in, in your in your mind, if Amy did not say, let's go for that golden case, would you have gone out and got another case? Would have you been? Oh, um, no, that Were wasn't you... the part where she was like, we, cause you don't know what key, you don't know that key is in there. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so when I say she was like, let's go for that trunk. She was decisively in that action talking about, let's go for this particular trunk. And I was like, okay, let's go. And the key happened to be in that. And we mutually decided that we didn't know whatever, we were going to give it a try. We were going to, we were going to try and get that. But um, to, that part was a choice we made together. But as far as choosing the trunk, that was all Amy. And then when you open the trunk and there's the key, if yeah. Amy, let's say was a different partner and they were like, let's not do that. Let's not go to the bottom two. Let's go get a different case. And how you felt about how you wanted to be safe. What would you have done? Would you have fought for that golden case or would you have been just gone back with your partner to go get the another case? Mm -mm. Nope, I needed that key. Uh huh. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, but what if your partner, let's say Nick, didn't, if he was your partner, didn't want to be in the bottom two? Imagine how that would have clashed. You know, as many a times where it ended up being teammates and somehow it just like, you know, yeah. worked out in that way. Like, um, you know, it's amazing. Like, it, there's just so many chances and all these types of things, but I would have fought for that. Um, and, Honestly, like Nick, he's never been on the bottom two either. He's never so like at some point we have to like get it together and like get you know play. We have to play. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That, that's true. So, that's, you know, yeah, everybody hiding and get the bank right. Right. Yeah, you can't hide in this game. You can't just no. Uh. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I was always picturing that. I'm like, what if? You know, I mean, imagine if you and Alyssa were partners, would you guys have, you would have had to been cohesive. And I would have went and mind you, if that's how it shook out and uh -huh. Nick and Nick and Rob were going to be the ones making a decision. Uh -huh. I would have went to my night owl and been like, Nick, you guys get to decide. Don't stop playing. I need right. to play <laughs> and this girl play. Like I would have fought tooth and nail to play no matter what. And I would have probably made it so that if Rob didn't let me play, then he would basically be showing his allegiance towards Alyssa. And he doesn't want to do that. Like I would have tried to figure something out because I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah. For I love that though. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, I get the vibe that from, from talking to each of you a little bit, and I've talked to Miranda a few times now on this show. Um, I get the vibe that you guys like Boston Rob as a person but he's just not somebody that you see what kind of threat he is. Like, this is something I think Brooke and I talked about a couple of days ago is like, Rob seems like he's well liked, but you guys are like, well, he's really good at how he plays. And he also wants to try to control things. And we're yeah. not about that. Is that the correct read on Rob and you guys? The, Rob is not as never say he, in his personal interviews, he can be as funny or as whatever, uh, you know, he can <laughs> throw it as he wants. But when you talk to Rob, oh, he just is nice as Peach. He's gonna, he's gonna say stuff like, like what we did at Temple. He's gonna be like, "Don't talk about Alyssa behind her back. She already left." And it's like, it's like you got to be like, "Wow, Rob, you're right." But it's not necessarily. Wait, but then Rob, but then, then Dawson walks away. And then, <laughs> Dalton, and an idiot. Yeah, so yeah. Throw that in there. So like, like that's gonna, he's. He's an amazing game player. Like he's um, yeah. dynamic and historic and, you know, it's, it's great. So there's nothing um, to dislike uh, about Rob. Uh, there were a couple of things that maybe rubbed me the wrong way. Like I do not enjoy being told to calm down. I'm, natu <laughs> I'm naturally animated. I'm naturally energetic. And when people say calm down to me, that means like, you know, that, that, that is a complete, like, you're too much. You're, you know, like, I, because it's my regular way. So I'm like, oh, I can't be my regular way. My regular way is making you like, 
you need me to calm down. And that just is like a trigger for me. So I was like, nah! I was like, oh no, Stephanie, no, keep it to yourself. He can say that. <laughs> hey, we were all feeling for you watching it because we were all like, oh no, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like that part. Yeah, he's allowed. He don't know like that. That's a thing for me. Um, and you know, like behind the scenes, maybe some of those things he might have said were like, you know, a little uncouth. Maybe I don't. You know, I don't know. Like, like these people aren't smart enough to figure this out and stuff like that. He probably has a good basis to say something like that. He's super experienced and probably has seen a variety of types of players. I mean, he labeled me basic and i would venture to say that if i'm so basic how would i recognize as Alyssa was a snake well before you did like that's not basic he said you're a really good player probably at the basic <laughs> level but he's only talked good about you and he was like, right he, he was like don't take it to heart and i'm like well dang okay so that yeah good for that because that, i like geek out over that like did he really say uh -huh. that television yeah yeah it's so awesome yeah i like i like rob yeah he's a lot the scenes of you two talking with each other yeah. i just find myself thinking if there's a way that these two could like put their brains together they would just run the gauntlet hello <laughs> hello yes yes i just I, I wasn't in a i didn't find myself in a position of being able to establish that and i wish i would have gotten an opportunity but like i foiled myself way too quickly or i'm like okay because one thing about rob which is true and any good player any good player in my opinion is that you have to really for real for real for real find a foundational trust with your with your you know, your final with your, your end game people. Right. Yeah. And, and if you're not, if somewhere along that early foundational trust is broken, like it's never going to work because the name of the game is backstab. So you got to kind of like get that early. And I missed that opportunity with Rob. I wasn't able to establish that early because he asked me a question in the mud. I didn't confess about what was in my case. I knew at that moment, I'm like, oh, well, we'll never be together as a duo here in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it happened so fast too. So like all of a sudden, like you kind of forget about like teamwork and you're just like, no, I gotta get a case. I gotta get up there. I gotta make the first episode. Then we can talk about teamwork. Oh, I was bummed out watching that. I'm like, oh, there, I saw my chance pass by. Cause you've got to get that early kind of like Trust. Like, why is Rob asking so many questions? Like, let us oh. your damn cases. <laughs> that would have been fun. That's I, a reality I, dream. That's a reality dream. I, I know. I know. When people were like, you played with Boss and Rob, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you are like, oh, my God, I've been watching him since I was a little kid. And I'm like, he's a great guy. I didn't know who he was till I met him. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> they're like, oh, you suck. But like, I'm just so, like I said, I was shocked, shell shocked on that island. I was, while I was on that island, I, I would still talk to everybody and be like, this is crazy. Like, we cannot forget that we're on this island and not allow so much animosity to come around. That's where it comes around me coming with the chair. And I'm like, let's, let's talk about something that we're what, proud of or something. You're so <laughs> thankful there for. So much yeah. going, there was so much going on. Everybody was talking talking all this like nonsense and granted Aaron was in that circle talking about what he was grateful for so you know we it was a moment I got to learn more about other people and it was cool so but we needed moments like that because there was so much paranoia on that island like I said you could not walk off without thinking that they're talking about you immediately immediately yeah, yeah and they could be talking about a crab or <laughs> no, they were not talking about crab. no they were actually talking about you I, no. I <laughs> hey let's rewind a little bit mm -hmm. so stephanie you really got your first kind of i mean in the first episode i think that there's some talk about you going at, rob goes to aaron and says like hey we, you should shift and take stephanie out it's kind of a misdirect for the tv audience um because he ends up getting branson out instead but then in the third episode when you get the steal and by the way, congrats on getting it because I know it, from watching it, it looked like you had a little bit of a moment there trying to get oh. up on that thing oh. and swing and all this stuff. <laughs> but okay, I, I gotta got say, we're gonna we're gonna relive this. I want both of you to comment. Yes, I'm pretty sure 
it was Miranda who said, just take the case with the lowest value. Is that yeah. correct? That, that, that was it. And and here's the funny part. It, the reason why I said it is because it was going on for so long. And at the moment, because Alyssa kept saying that Stephanie knew the, the plan. So I was like, well, take the lowest case. Because that, to me, was the plan, you know? And so that's why I was like, go ahead, go ahead and do it. Cause it, and that was just me being like this, like in, like, I was just like trying to hurry up the game, but I had no idea that there was a two part plan. It was very confusing to me. Um, and then me going, woo, like that, like that made everyone seem that I was on the Rob tribe. And I just wasn't, I was just over enthusiastic. I love the fact that I was like up in the sky and like hanging and stuff, but it, it had nothing to, honestly, I even said in the, uh, the, confessionals afterwards i was like i felt extremely bad because stephanie should have got immunity i should have gotten immunity like that is the game and the fact that everyone created this paranoia to try to protect somebody i don't know it just kind of irks my nerves but yeah i did chime in everyone's like who is this brunette talking oh i just wanted to <laughs> i just so bad um you know i just so bad wanted to pretend like it was a real game that you know I got the steal, so I do the obvious thing. I take the high from Rob, from Rob. <laughs> yeah, like you would, duh. Safe, you would have been safe, but I think you would have taken it if Claudia didn't speak up. Maybe I don't know what your thought is, but I feel like if she didn't speak up in that moment, yeah, I needed to. I needed to. I needed people to mind their business um, and not jump down my throat. Because when that happened and it felt like, oh, my goodness, I don't have a choice here because I wanted to, like, just not even acknowledge anything about a plan. That's why when Rob's like, uh, I understand everyone's on board with the plan. And I was like, well, what plan are you speaking of? Are you, right. speaking, of, are you speaking of the one where I um, throw the entire excursion and just shoot for the grass. I'm not doing that. So what plan are you talking about, Robert? And, you know, like, <laughs> I just like, you know, in that moment, it was so much pressure from people that I wasn't sure where I stood with um, them. So um, I felt like I was pressured into having to go along with what everyone wanted to try and like, but it was a little too late because I had already established a target on my back, but I wanted to kind of like, you know, some way get out of that by, you know, not acknowledging that I knew anything about it. And the plan, as everyone has said, it went over two days and Rob at the last minute changed the plan. So I felt like, okay, I have wiggle room. I have plenty of wiggle room because this is a raggedy, raggedy plan. So I, I don't need to be, you know, in, I don't need to be forced into this plan. And then if maybe I could also drop a gem to Alyssa to be like, girl, like, think about what you're just saying. You're, you, Rob just told you to throw it and to have me throw it. I was like, that doesn't make sense. But despite all of my ways to kind of get out of it, I was still forced into, like, basically, you know, taking Claudia's case, which honestly was, like, literally the stupidest move. It was it. because we spoke up, too. Like I, like I said, I should have never spoke up. I did it because I was just, like, it's hurrying. pressure. And then, and then, yeah, Claudia spoke up. And, you know, Amy and Dawson yeah. and Jordan. I don't think they spoke at all. Aaron didn't speak, you know, Alyssa. So I it definitely, and you were fighting your fears at the same time. Like you were going it in sky, having to do that. And then you finally got a steal. You finally had a chance for immunity. And then you got come kind of bombarded because you are a team player. Um, but you ultimately, yeah, like I, I just wish you would have had the immunity um, because if you had immunity, then who was the bottom two? Aaron and Kim, right? And you would put Aaron up against the banker. That's Probably. just the way that it worked out, you know? Or maybe not. Would, maybe. would Rob have been in the bottom two because you would have taken oh, yeah, Rob and, from him? Rob and Aaron. Rob and Aaron, right? Or Rob right. And, and then you would have had immunity, so you would have put probably Rob up, right? I, or do you think Aaron at that point? If I could have gotten to Aaron, because at that point, I, you know, I really, really, really was trying to work with Aaron. So <laughs> if I could have gotten to Aaron and maybe talked some game into him, because Aaron is extremely knowledgeable gamer. So don't let him, don't let him fool you. <laughs> and so I was excited yeah. when we, when Aaron and I were able to ever talk strategy, he excites me in his gameplay and I do love it. So I would have probably actually tried to figure out a way 
um, to target Rob and in, um, in that in that moment, um, right. whatever way that that looked like for whoever was playing. Like, and I don't. I, that means probably I wouldn't have wanted Rob to play. And then if Rob won, you would have been safe. Right. Yeah. Right. And so. he would have. Well, and if he lost, he would have been gone home. Kim would have gone out then. Kim would have gone out that night then. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. But hey, it would have been our friend Kim. <laughs> She said last week, when we were talking about last week's episode, uh -huh. you and Aaron have that emotional uh, exchange where, you know, she says that was all an acting job by Steph. Is that correct? What she say? It was like Broadway. I, well, I cry when I want to cry, you know, like however I was feeling. I was very emotional because I was very emotional because um, I really, like I said, I was really trying to play with Aaron. I really, I really wanted him to see Alyssa for the person that she was. And he just kept never choosing me. And I'm like, so frustrated. I'm like, dude, she's not, you can't play with her. Like foundationally, you're never going to be able to trust her. I done seen some things that she's done. I was like, yo, when she was up all night, you know, having explosive bowel movements all over the beach as a side note. <sighs> Okay, Kim was up all night with her, nursing her to help, getting her water, bringing her tissue, like helping her all night. She was up for some one hours. Alyssa said, when she's making up this plan, right? Alyssa says, oh, and I know this is gonna work, whatever Kim says, because she was up all night helping me. So anything I tell her, she's gonna believe. I'm like, wow. So you really manipulated this woman's like kindness when you were like, you know, blowing your brains out of, poop out your ears or whatever you were doing and and you take that as an opportunity to take someone's kindness and use it so that you can you know like manipulate it in that way like that just is like ew it's a little icky a little icky felt a little way and every time and the tag situation that that happened to my case i kept trying to talk to aaron and be like sir here is the evidence here is all the evidence. And all he could do was just like, my princess. Ugh. I'm like, oh, God. Like, get over it. Play the game. You would be so good at it. Play the game. But, like, whatever. I, I do wish that Aaron gave some of us a chance, you know. To give us a chance. I don't think. I, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know why he chose yeah. her to be uh, his alliance so fast. It must be her, her piercing eyes or something. But... Brown eyed girl over here, like sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the physical contact. Like every time you turn around, she had her her body on him in some way, whether it's like touching or rubbing or grabbing his thigh or whatever else. And other people can attest to that. That might have been like the physical like attention or something that maybe he wanted more so than a game connection. Like we just have so many like philosophical um, like beliefs that are similar. Aaron and I were raised in the same sort of area and in this, you know, we went to similar type schools. Like there was a lot of like ways in which I thought we would be a good teammate, but he kept choosing her and kept choosing her and kept choosing her. I was like, Bleh. Terrible. <laughs> so when I was crying, I was very sad, but also trying to get information on like what's happening here. Um, yeah, I don't know. On that note, um, Aaron totally, I think, was just trying to go along with um, saying you. I don't know. I don't think it was personally Aaron that was like, I want to get Stephanie out. Um, but I feel like he just was going with what Alyssa and Rob wanted. Um, because that's what he says is, you know, naturally like he didn't want to get you out. Now, do you believe that? He that said, actually he did. He wanted me to have the lowest key. He wanted but, me to get a key and I think you to get a key. Yeah, yeah. at first he wanted you to get the key. And then I um, scared him. And then you scared him because <laughs> I should have freaking scared him. What the heck? I was just like, <laughs> Um, and when I saw that too, Stephanie, when I first saw that, I'm like, oh man, she's getting the key. Like, because she's talking smack about the Alliance or, you know, his people. So I'm like, and then I was surprised that I was like, how did she just get out of that right now? And then I got it. Oh my God, what is going on here? <laughs> Yo, floored. That was a flooring. Um, but I mean, it could have been his plan, but I, again, I, I thought it was maybe Alyssa's or Rob's trying to just like horse him into it. I like I said, if, if it wasn't for them two, I think Aaron would be a very good teammate. I think so too. 
Well, that's why Rob probably wants Aaron, right? He sees that value in him. Rob got to ride with him first. We didn't get to ride with him. <laughs> yeah. He called well, dibs. Well, yeah. We see we see how he plays. We see I always think about um Philip and on Survivor with Boston Rob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would love to see Philip on this show. Oh my gosh. Hey, they they might bring him on here as the as a Boston Rob, right? A little job <laughs> right now. Oh my word. <laughs> I wonder who they're going to bring on for season two. Like, what celebrity? I think I know who Stephanie would pick, if I had to guess. <laughs> her celebrity? I, yeah. And, uh, let me guess here, Steph, who you would pick. I like, think Sandra. I was thinking that Steph would say Sari Fields. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see that. You know, I think her social game is divine. Um, she's the, the greatest to never have won, you know, like I love a lot of things about her gameplay and, you know, I don't think she's like, I think she's like half villain. I don't care. Even if she wasn't a villain, like I feel yeah, like I do, I do. she's an anti-hero. Yes. 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 So I, that would be amazing. I mean, you'd have to really get some like novice kind of like regulars, um, to play. Like <laughs> yeah. You have, you would really have to, I think. <laughs> I want to see my girl Stephanie Lagrosa on season. Oh! Two. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I knew you was gonna say that, but I could see that. <laughs> I will always, <laughs> always defend Stephanie. I've been a day one yes. Stephanie fan. Yeah, and, wrong um, with her. yeah. So okay, well, we only have like a. We're gonna wrap things up here shortly. Yes, so I got a question for this Stephanie, and I'd like to know. You know, is there anything else that you just want to get a chance to talk about that you haven't been able to? address or bring up or discuss here um no i think you know it's important for people just to remember that it, this is a game we all walked in walk in our normal everyday existence and uh you know it, regardless of when we have moments of niceness or not niceness or varied emotions it's important to remember to be good humans at the end of the day um so i just like to remind people of that yes Miranda, do you have anything else for Stephanie? Girl, keep rocking it. <laughs> Let's go Monday night. I'm, I'm, tuning yes. in. I'm tuning in. And, uh, you know, whoever is watching this, if you guys have any doubts, don't have any doubts, go apply to season two of Deal or No Deal Island. Yes, that's right. <laughs> do it. Get off the couch. Go for it. Get off that couch. I believe in you. Yes. <laughs> Two more couch warriors. Yes. Just like Sari Fields getting up off the couch. Yes. Going exactly. to play reality TV. Yeah. All right. Both of you, Stephanie first, social media handles, throw them out My, there so people can follow you. On all of the platforms, I'm Dr. Underscore Midwife. And so you can find me talking game on TikTok, talking game on Instagram, and also reproductive justice and health because I'm a midwife and that's what I do. But I love uh, my internet friends. So please become one of them. Yay. And Stephanie, you go live, right? On what days? I, I go, well, usually I go live on Sundays, but, you know, put your notifications on. My week's in shambles out here. So if you're interested, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Mine is, uh, Twitter is at It's Miranda Rose. And then Miranda Rose Harrison for Facebook and Instagram. Harrison, like normal. So it shouldn't be an issue. And Miranda M I N D A. Um, go and follow. Help me get some more followers. Come on, guys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies. This was great. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Love your show. Bye. <laughs> All right, folks. That concludes our conversation today with Stephanie and, of course, Miranda here for a new segment we call Deal or No Deal Island Insiders. Dondee. That's D-O-N-D-I-I. -I. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back again next week, hopefully. Miranda and I will probably have another guest joining us, uh, which we will reveal after next week's episode airs. We don't want to give too much away, but it's going to be a great episode. Brooke and I will be back with a recap. And of course, we'll have our exit interview. Um, and once again, it was great getting Stephanie's perspective on things. If Alyssa wants to do 
a long form thing and, and get all of her thoughts out in a longer period of time. She's more than welcome to do that. Uh, she can reach out if she would like to have me have her for that. Um, just so make sure everyone gets a chance to comment on this whole situation and get their side of the story. We did get some of it in the exit interview. It was nice to get Stephanie's side here, but also just kind of hear her and Miranda talk a little bit about the memories and the times that they shared on the show. It was a lot of fun. I've been loving Deal or No Deal Island so far. So if you guys are enjoying our coverage here on the Jack Vita show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I think about only 85% of our viewers are subscribed, but turn on those notifications so you don't miss future coverage, content, interviews, and recaps here on this channel. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever it is that podcasts are found, you can hit subscribe there. You can also follow me at Jack Vita Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, I'm Jack Vita. Bring in the dancing lobsters.